Greetings, everyone. Welcome to e and &E Learning Hub, where I'm going to go through and explain the solutions for question two from the 2021 CSEC Electrical and Electronic Pass paper. So let's begin. Part A. It says, in this space provided, draw a standard electrical slash electronic symbol of the components listed. All right. So part one of A, DC voltmeter. So this is the symbol for the DC voltmeter. Part two, Zener diode. So this is what the Zener diode look like. Electrical bell for part three. This is a symbol. For part four, JK flip-flop. This is what it looks like. Part five, AC motor. All right, so this is the symbol for the AC motor. And part six, the double pole single throw switch. All right, so these are the symbols. All right, so that's it for part A. So let's move on to part B now. It says a modulator combines a radio frequency carrier signal with an audio frequency signal to transmit information over long distance. In the spaces below, sketch the output signal of the modulator that varies. Part one, the frequency of the carrier signal. Part two, the amplitude of the carrier signal. All right, so as was mentioned in part B, a modulator combines radio carrier signal with a audio frequency signal to transmit over long distance. And that is why persons are able to listen to the radio from miles and miles because the signal, or in this case, the audio signal is being modulated with a carrier signal. So the carrier signal is what basically carries the audio signal. Hence why it's called a carrier signal. Now, there are two types of modulation that we're gonna be focusing on. So we have the frequency modulation. So with the frequency modulation, we have a carrier signal and the information signal. So what will happen is that the, the information signal will be imposed on the carrier signal, or in other words, they'll be combined. Now, when they are combined together, what will happen is that the carrier signal frequency will change as a result of the combination of the information signal and the carrier signal. And what you will get after that is the frequency modulated signal, which is this waveform here or this signal. So the frequency modulation, the frequency of the carrier signal will vary while the amplitude and the phase remain constant. All right, so for this question, what was given is the carrier signal and we had to add the information signal and the frequency modulated signal. So that's it for frequency modulation. Next up, we have amplitude modulation. Just like with the frequency modulation, you have the carrier signal and you have the information signal. So again, the information signal will be combined with the carrier signal. Once that happens, the amplitude of the carrier signal will change as a result of the information signal being added to it. And this is what the signal will look like after modulation, all right? So modulation is the process of combining both the carrier signal and the information signal so it can be transmitted over long distances. 
All right, so that's it for part B. All right, so let's move on to part C. It says, figure one shows a pictorial diagram of an electronic circuit. So here is the pictorial diagram of an electronic circuit. So looking at the circuit, you can see where there is a battery here, 12 volt, have a switch, have a resistor, R1, another resistor here, R2. We also have a capacitor and we have a inductor as well. So part C says to draw in the space below a schematic diagram to represent the circuit shown in figure one. So here is the schematic diagram. Now remember, a schematic diagram uses single line and graphical symbols to represent the actual components. All right, so here we have the symbol of the battery, the symbol for the switch, symbols for the resistors, the symbol for the capacitor, and the symbol for the inductor. And also another thing to note is that schematic diagrams are always drawn in their de-energized state, hence why the switch is open. All right, so that's it for this question.